Hi everyone, I'm Oliver from Blendtoots.com. This is a rigging tutorial for beginners, so we will create a basic rig for the eyes of a simple character. And using that situation, I'll explain how armatures work, how to create bones, pattern them, add constraints. Then we will create some custom shapes to make them more useful and visually appealing. Apart from that, I'll share with you some little tips and tricks along the road. So, let's have fun! Here we have our basic scene with a face and two eyes and uh, we are not actually going to use the face for now, we are only going to rig the, the eyes, so I'm going to hide it. You can press H to hide it and Alt H to unhide everything that we have hidden before. So let's hide it and now we only see our eyeballs, which, which is uh, what we need to work with. Now let's press 1 and press Shift A, Armature and Single Bone. Here we have our armature, which is a container for all the bones. In Blender, an armature uh, is the rig itself. Inside an armature, we can create bones, join them, parent them, move them, uh, and, and then we can add constraints, whatever. But all the rig, the full rig, uh, is inside this armature, which is like some kind of container. So it's uh, very easy because then when we have the full rig, we can scale it very easily with uh, S like a normal object and move it around uh, like an object itself, but not messing with a lot of objects inside it, right? Because we are only we have only access to all that objects inside it in the edit mode and in the pose modes, and we are going to see the differences between them. Uh, in edit mode, we can just create bones, uh, parent them, and move them just place them, uh, put them in, pl in place, you know? And then in post mode is where we can animate them and add constraints to them and all that stuff. So uh, we, are going, we are going to use these uh, two modes right now, so don't worry. Let's go to the edit mode, and in the edit mode it works like a mesh, kind of. Uh, in a mesh we have vertices, polygons, faces, edges. Here we have joints and bones, right? We can press Shift D, to duplicate it, X to delete them. If we press a joint, we can uh, press E to extrude and we can create new bones. Uh, we can, with a joint selected, we can click, left click and with control, I mean control left click and we can create new bones uh, between our position, our mouse position and the selected joint. And we can also if we select two different joints, we can press F and uh, Blender will create a bone that will fill that gap. Now, if we move any bone, you can see that uh, the head and the tail are moving around with him and the other bones, the surrounding bones, are adapting to it. It doesn't happen here, because here I just created uh, a fill, all right, and the fill is connected to the, to the previous bone, but not to the, to the next one. All right, so if we want to do that, we need to parent them. And uh, let's see how parenting works. We can uh, select any number of bones that we want, and the last one will be the parent, all right? But for now, I only want this one. Select this one first, shift this other, which is the parent, and now press Control P. And we have two options, keep offset or connected. Keep offset would leave our son uh, bone in the place, and uh, but we'll make it follow the parent. Connected will connect the tail and the head of the sun, so it's like this, right? It jumped here, and now the bones are connected. If we want to disconnect it, we can press Alt P. Disconnect will maintain the parenting, as you can see through this line. This line represents the, the relationship, but the object can move around freely. If we just uh, parent them again and make them connected, if we want to disconnect it and, uh, you know, unparent it, we can press Alt-P and clear parent. So now it's free and it's not parented there. So now here it is. Okay, now another interesting property that bones have is the rolling, all right? Let's say that we want to rotate this bone in this uh, this way, okay? Just crappy grease pencil here. <laughs> All right, so uh, instead of rotating it and finding the way to rotate it or using uh, probably a local angle to rotate it, 
It doesn't matter, it's very easy, because we can press Ctrl R and Blender will let us rotate it very easily around itself. Or we can press N and here we have the rolling value, which is very handy. Okay, so let's just delete these guys, press X and let's create our rig for the eyes. So let's press N to hide that, uh, that view and now let's press tab to edit the edit mode, select an eyeball, press shift S and to move the cursor to the selection, alright, so we can just uh, align the new bone that we are going to create for the eyeball in the, the exact center of the eyeball. So uh, let's go again to the edit mode in the armature, press shift D and duplicate the, the, the bone, doesn't matter uh, where we duplicate it because we are going to align it. And actually, I'm going to make it so it goes from the center looking forward through the pupil. So press R, X, 90, all right? Press Shift S and selection to cursor. There we go. Now, as you can see, the rolling is not working as we expected. We prefer it if we look from the front, it should be aligned, all right, with the axis. So uh, what I'm going to do is to press N, and here the rolling, which just automatically rotated because uh, we rotated the bone, uh, we put it on zero, and there we go. Now uh, we have two options to follow, which is go outside the armature and select the other eyeball, put the, the cursor there and align a new bone there. But we have another option, which is select the this bone, which is right in the middle, and we just know that uh, both uh, eyes are exactly the same uh, around the center, all right? I mean, this one is not farther away than this one. They are, the center is the center of the eyes. So we can just select this one, press uh, cursor to select it, press dot in the, in the keyboard, or just go here and select the 3D cursor. So this 3D cursor in the middle, in the center, adds like a pivot point. So now we can select this bone, press Shift-D, right-click to cancel the movement, and now we can create a mirror here. And the mirror works pressing Control m X, Enter. All right, we can do it in any other axis, but in this, in this, uh, in this uh, situation, I wanted to do it uh, in the X axis, all right, which is this one. And as you can see, it's already mirrored to the other side of the 3D cursor. Um, okay, let's let these two joints press comma to go back to the to the normal pivot point or just here banding box center of medium or medium point and take them a little back like this. Now just go ahead, select these two guys, shift D to duplicate them in Y and put them like here for example. Okay. And also let's select this one, shift D, duplicate it and move it here. Later you will understand what I'm doing here. Now these two guys, I want them to be the sons of this one because this one will represent the face, all right, the full head. So press Ctrl P and keep offset. So they remain in its position, but as you can see through these discontinued lines, they are already parented. And then these two objects need to be sons of this one. Now let's explain what this is. So these are the bones of the of the eyes, all right? And they are looking to each side, all right? Uh, I mean, this one will be looking to this one, and this one will be looking to this one. But we want to be able to move uh, two eyes at the same time. So this one will move this and this, all right? So when we move this, everything will move. So each object will be following its own, uh, its own goal, all right? The thing is that we can, uh, apart from this one, we can move independently these ones in case we want to move uh, each uh, eye in a different direction, all right? Then you will understand it better as you see how it works. So now we want this, we have this, uh, what I'm going to do is to just name things properly. So let's go here 
And here we have, this is an armature. This will be uh, i.r. The dot r represents the right side. And this will be i.l. This is the i look at uh, dot r we can just with the cursor over that we can press control control c to copy go to this one control v to paste it and instead of this we press control control uh, i mean <laughs> we just write down a shift l now select this one and this will be eyes look at and this will be the head the reason why I'm naming the, the, the bones is because later with the constraints and all of that is easier if we know how things are named. Okay, so now let's go outside from the edit mode and let's go here to the post mode. And as you can see now, if we select this one, the two, these two guys follow it. These ones follow it as well. And this one are independent again these ones are also independent all right so now we need to do that this one looks at this and this one looks at this how to do it well we have different options the first option is to select this bone which is the one that will be affected by the constraint and just here we have the bones options all right this is the armature options this is the bones options and these are the bones constraints, the one with the chain there. So add bone constraint here, and we can just go ahead and add a track to. All right, we know what the target is. Now this one needs to look at this one, and this one is called. Actually, let's let's go here, and here let's activate in the armature options. Let's activate the names, so we can see here how this looks like. And looks like this one I didn't uh, actually apply this you need to press enter to apply it because uh, if you press outside it it will be replaced by the original name that was before you uh, changed it all right so you need to accept the new name okay so mm, we need this to look at this one so let's select this one let's go here to the constraint the track to constraint and here uh, you can see that here uh, we we don't have our bones what happens that they are inside the armature. So we need to select the armature, all right? That could be any name, all right? This is just the name that uh, Blender applies uh, automatically when you create an armature. And now under the armature, you can select the bone, okay? So here we know that that is the uh, left eye. So this is the target we wanted to look at. Now let's select this one, move it, and you can see how it's following. Now, what we need to do is to select this eye, shift and left click and right click, sorry, in the in the bone, and now press Control P, and we have a lot of options. Uh, be careful because some of them are for deforming the object with the armature, all right, with the different bones, uh, so the mesh gets deformed. But in this case, as it's just a, you know a solid object, we want to be just parented to the bone, all right. And, not any of the options uh, of the armature deforming, all right, but just here in bone. If you uh, pick one of the object uh, parentings, this will parent the object to the full armature, not to the bone, to the selected bone that we have, all right? So here is the bone. And now if we look, if we move this one, you can see how the eye looks at it. Pretty cool, okay? Now, uh, what else we need to do? Okay, keep in mind that here, all right, if you have the objects oriented in a different way, here you may want to change this uh, stuff. But as everything is, uh, you know, put in the right place, like uh, uh, the eyes are aligned, mm, you know, the sides are the x-axis and the front and back are the y-axis and everything is uh, correct, it works by default, all right? And everything is perfectly aligned. If you have a more complex uh, rig, you may need to, to retouch these uh, positions, all right? But, well, it doesn't matter for now. Just in this tutorial, I just want to give you the basics. All right, so now the, the eye is following that. Now, keep in mind that if you are in the object mode, you can't select specific bones. You need to be 
in the pose mode in the armature. So this way you can select any object and when you uh, go to the, to the armature, you can select a specific bones. Otherwise, it won't work. Okay, now let's see a different, uh, a different uh, way of uh, adding a constraint. You can select the object that will affect the one with the constraint. You can select the object after it with shift uh, that will receive the constraint, right? Because this one will look at this. So you need to select the one that uh, it will look at it and then the one that will look. So uh, press Control shift c and you have a list of all the possible uh, constants that we have to add. So here is uh, the track 2 again, and now, as you can see, it already works. Let's select this eyeball, let's select this one again, Control p bone, and here, if we select this one, you can see now how the bones follow it. So it's pretty cool. Now let's press Alt H, uh, sorry, uh, Alt H. Oh, okay, because we are here in this, in this one. Okay, uh, to go from the object mode to the post mode directly in the armature, you can press Control Tab, right? If you press Tab, you go to the edit mode, but with Control Tab, you jump between object and post mode. Okay, so now press Alt H. We have our face here. And we can see how, oh, <laughs> pose mode, I'm stupid here. So you can see now how our eyes look at their target. The thing is that as they are independent, we can do stuff like this, or we can just move an eye independently. So we can make our character look completely crazy. <laughs> All right, now there is a cool thing here, and is that the position in which you create the object in edit mode is the default position. So if I move this here uh, and uh, I start moving stuff and, you know, like this, everything went crazy. So uh, we don't know uh, where it was its default position, but if we press Control G, right, Alt G, sorry, we select all the objects that we want, all the bones that we want, press Alt G, and its position will be reset. If we press Alt R, its rotation will be reset. Let's try with it. Alt R, it resets the rotation and Alt S uh, resets the scaling. Let's look at it. So you can do weird stuff like this. Alt S will reset the scaling. So pretty cool. Now, mm, there is another thing I want to do, which is just go into the edit mode and just move this down to here. So now, we can select the, the head bone and also move the head. Thing is, the head is not still parented to it, so press uh, select the head, shift and select the bone, control P, bone. And now if we select the bone, we can move the head around, okay, like this, and this objects, you know, the eyes will look at the goal. So as you can see, rigging is pretty fun. Yeah, it's kind of uh, very technical, but it's really fun. I, I really like it. All right, so now we have another thing that I, I want to show you how to do, which is that right here, you know, we don't really want to be able to select the face and this stuff. You know, let's say that we finished our rig and we mm, want to only be able to select the, the bones, okay? So what I'm going to do is to, first, if you are in the post mode, when you select uh, a round, the bones are more important than the mesh. So it's easier to select the bones even if you have a mesh under the cursor. All right, but you know, uh, it's even, you know, it, it kind of interferes in our workflow. So uh, what I will do is to go to the object mode. So it's easier, you can see how now you can select the pupil, but if you are in the post mode, if I press there, I can only select the bone because it has preference. So what I will do is to select the face, right? Actually go here to the outliner and probably you didn't know this, but it's pretty handy. And we can just go here to the armature and here we have the face, left eye and right eye. Okay, and actually in, inside this ones we have the left pupil and the right pupil because they are parented. So we can go here and click in this uh, little arrow 
there we go we make these objects to be not selectable so now if I press uh, if I click around I want I'm not able to select it even if I press a I can't select them at all all right but it doesn't matter because I have my rig uh, ready to move it so I will only be able to select my rig and now uh, there is the last step we need uh, actually let's go here to the armature options just make this smaller and in the armature options uh, let's uh, disable the names all right because I don't want these names to be shown up uh, anymore for now uh, there is another thing and is that we can change the way the the bones are represented here we have the sticks all right which is pretty handy we have the x-ray which allows us to see the the bones uh, over the object which is something that I usually use because uh, well it's kind of handy you know because if we don't have that it's kind of difficult to understand where the bone of the head is but if we enter on it here we have it all right if uh, we activate the x-ray we can always see it and uh, you know this is some kind of very intrusive shape the autoedral is uh, you know it's very big and uh, it uh, doesn't let us see the face but with the stick for example it's very <clears throat> you know not intrusive now we have other options of course the envelope this is uh, one that when I started with blender I loved this shape for the bones <laughs> all right well this this uh, actually represents actually let me try something this uh, represents we need to go to the edit mode this uh, yeah this represents the envelope which is the um, you know you can control how much it's uh, the, the 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 radius of the tail and the head by the way the head is the beginning of the bone and the tail is the ending of the bone all right so each bone is delimited by two joints and uh, each one of them is uh, the beginning one is the head and the ending one is the tail now with this kind of bone the envelope which do which do the, what you are defining is the you know the deforming area that will have once you uh, join it uh, to a to a to a match to the to the format so for now let's uh, you know this is a wire this is another way that is a pretty non-intrusive way okay which is just uh, a few sticks <laughs> but yeah let's uh, let's do it with these ones for now because we still have to go ahead and make this usable all right because this doesn't say much about what this kind of rig does all right, so we need to go ahead and uh, do something like uh, making beautiful shapes to, you know, so it's easier to select them and, and all that. So we need to start creating a shape. Uh, let's go to the front view and let's go here, shift A. And in the mesh, we could create curves or whatever, but I'm going to use uh, just a circle. So here we have our circle and uh, let's press tab to go into the edit mode uh, select these two guys activate here the proportional editing you can activate it as well pressing O in the keyboard all right and uh, let's just scale these ones in and the mouse scroll wheel just to make this look like some kind of uh, goggles or something like that all right so now the next thing we need to do is to name this properly so let's go here to the object panel and here let's call it uh, s down slash I don't know no how, how is that called down well s look at <laughs> I will check out later how that's it, how that is called um, all right uh, now let's go here select this uh, bone go to the bone properties oh sorry Turn this up a little and here down in the display sub panel we have this and the reason why I called it S uh, look at is because if all the shapes we call them with an S at the beginning of the name as a prefix when we go here in the drop down list which in this case is a drop up list <laughs> uh, if we write down S we will only see here all the shapes and not all the rest of the objects of the scene which in this case is uh, even usable because we have only a few objects but usually 
we would have a lot of objects because, uh, you know, rigs usually get uh, pretty complicated and a lot of objects could be in the scene more than a character. So uh, if we add some kind of prefix, just write in the prefix, we'll separate all that elements uh, in the drop down list, which is pretty useful. So there we have it. And as you can see, we have nothing here showing up. Uh, reason is that this is a mesh and we need to activate the wireframe. Keep in mind that some at some point, if you press C uh, and you are uh, working in the wireframe mode, you will see them as well, but in the solid mode, they won't work. So just activate here the wireframe or you can hide them as well, but uh, well, this is not uh, very useful at this point. And uh, yeah, we have uh, the wireframe showing up. Now <clears throat> here, sorry, here uh, we have a little issue and is that this is not really well aligned. I made it on purpose so I can now explain to you a couple of things that we want to do, that we can do to realign this up. So uh, the first method, which is the one that I use the less, but sometimes it's useful, is to create a new bone here, all right, and align it where we want it, which is just with the head of the bone centered between the two eyes, right? Something like that. We can actually make it smaller. All right, let's say something like this is cool. All right, so now let's call this bone something like uh, shape. All right, and Jess was looking in, uh, uh, down on Google how this was called, it's an underscore, all right. <laughs> Just uh, learning English from my tutorials, all right. So uh, here I have this object and I want this object to actually move with this one. So uh, control P and keep offset. All right, so now when I move this, the other one follows it. Uh, the reason why we have this uh, little shape here is because this bone is uh, has been scaled, so it's smaller. And also, uh, when we as we duplicated it here, we still have this thing going on. All right. So what we want to do is to be to have this shape showing up in this bones position. So instead of uh, uh, using the, the the actual bone in which we place it, we go here and we select that other bone, which is this one. Eyes look at shape. And now. This custom shape is aligned with the other uh, bone, right? This is uh, pretty cool, but, uh, you know, in this case, it would be unnecessary. We have two other ways to do it. So just go here and there we go. All right, let's go to the edit mode. Just with X, delete that bone. And we have this other way, which is the one that I probably use the most. Just go into the edit mode of the uh, actual shape we are using and uh, select everything with A, press G and just move it around until we get it in the right position. Keep in mind that sometimes uh, it may not be exactly well aligned, all right? We will see that later with these uh, two eyes custom shapes, right? Because they are oriented in a different way and they work differently. But in this case, this would work. But actually, I'm going to leave it where it was because what I want to do is to actually, in this case, right, keep in mind that this uh, probably is not possible in every case, but uh, in this situation, we can do it because this bone is, uh, you know, on its own. It's not joined or chained to any other bones, so uh, we can just move it around freely. So we can just do something like this. All right, and place it right where we want it. And there we have our th our thing. Now, you can see that if we scale this a lot, the custom shape always also gets scaled. And there we are. And uh, all right, so we are going to leave it like this. <clears throat> and now we need to go ahead and continue with these little bones. So let's go to the front view again, uh, and let's create another circle. There we have it. Now this circle will be called, uh, let's go and uh, S underscore, uh, I love knowing how that's called. <laughs> I look at. 
And now let's go here and in custom shape, uh, I look at and activate the wireframe. And as you can see, it's really big and it's uh, horizontally aligned because these bones are rotated. But we are going uh, to see how to fix that now. So let's select the other bone, just do the same, activate the wireframe. And now let's go here, enter in the edit mode. We can just, now ju just to show it to you, uh, if we are in the object mode, if we scale it or rotate it around, it doesn't really affect this because this is taking only the, uh, the, the mesh that is inside the object. All right, so if we enter in the edit mode, we can actually fix it. And now RX to rotate it, 90 degrees, enter, and there we have our thing. So there we are. Okay, much more visually attractive and uh, useful than just a couple of bones like these ones. All right, uh, finally, let's go for the head. All right, let's move these ones. Uh, it doesn't matter where you have them in the scene. And actually, uh, we could just send them to the last layer because this last layer is usually reserved to use it as uh, some kind of bin or trash. And actually this, uh, this layer is usually called something like crap to hide, uh, trash, bin, uh, I don't know, not used, <laughs> whatever. Because it's where we, um, you know, storage everything in the scene that we used at some point and we may need to use uh, in the future, but we don't actually need it all the time in the view. So we just press M and move it to the last layer, all right? And then we can just uh, access it and with shift and left click, we can access uh, several layers at once. Now, we are going to duplicate this one, just move it around and, uh, well, let's actually press shift C. So we have the 3D cursor in the middle again, in the center, shift S, selection to cursor. And now let's just move this around so we select these two central points, press O to activate the proportional editing and move them back, something like this. Okay. Now rotate them in the X axis here. You can just do whatever you feel uh, looks cool to you or looks uh, interesting or usable. All right, so in this case, uh, you know, we could start working on it uh, harder, but uh, I just want to show you how this would do. So something like this, maybe move it like that. All right. And maybe just so you can see how it works, just select those two guys, press F and uh, subdivide and just move this guy a little bit something like that. Uh, keep in mind that we can go ahead and add a modifier, a subdivision surface. Uh, so now this gets a little curvy. So this would be the head. And uh, now this one, let's call it, um, pa -pa -pa, let's go here to the object uh, panel and let's call it S head. So now we can just move it out of the scene because we want to align it with this bone. So let's select the bone go down here, uh, sorry, let's go here to the bone properties. And here, let's press S, head, activate the wireframe. And we can see it's really big. So let's go scale it and uh, move it up a little bit. Move it forward and down, something like that. Okay, and I think that's uh, already usable. Okay, so now we have our head and we have our eyes movement custom shapes, which is really more uh, good looking than the other one. Wow, and here I just made a, a mess. We can go here and just arrange it like something very, very simple, like this. F, W, subdivide, just let this guy uh, Press O to deactivate the proportional editing. Do something like this, and there we have it. 
yeah, now it looks uh, better. All right, so we have that. And uh, now let me think what else we want to do. All right, so we probably want to go here and disable in the armature properties the X-ray option, right? Because it's just a couple of uh, figures and we can see that how here we have some intersections. So let's go here and just scale it a little in the X-axis. So the shape covers the whole head. That's right. So, you know, so it's not as intrusive, all right? But if we have some, uh, you know, sometimes it's useful, sometimes uh, we prefer to have a more clue in view and not have all of this uh, over the model. Um, all right, other things I wanna do is to go here to the view properties and uh, hide these lines because they are useful when we are working with the uh, relationships between the bones and in the edit mode and all that and when uh, adding constraints and stuff so we can see uh, visually how objects are interconnected between themselves but uh, right now already we don't need that at all so we can go here on display and deactivate here the relationship lines so now we have a more a cleaner view now other thing is uh, this one is already in the last uh, layer so we have two options all right uh, we have the option of uh, just hiding this layer right so we can only see the model ones and uh, oh by the way uh, here is a little trick uh, if you rotate around with R the object will rotate according to the view perspective all right this way but if you press R twice R R you can see how the cursor converts into a few arrows and it lets you orbit the model so this is uh, something pretty funny and sometimes useful to just post things very quickly all right and uh, other thing that I wanted to, to say is that you can just at this point press X and delete that shapes all right blender already uh, use them for the custom shapes and if you are completely sure that you won't need them anymore and you won't make any more changes to them uh, you can just take them and delete them but be very careful with this uh, because if you sometime need to come back and uh, you know just change a little the shape of uh, one of these custom shapes uh, you will need to build it again from scratch so uh, be careful with this um, and yes if you go out of the uh, Blender, if you exit Blender and open the scene again, they will be here still. So, uh, yeah, be very careful with that, but you can do it. So you have uh, a clean scene. All right, and now let's check a couple more things that are pretty interesting, which are the bone layers, all right? Uh, as you can see here, we have this, uh, this custom shades, which are really cool, but what the hell is this? I mean, uh, we don't need this to be shown anymore because these are only a few bones that are used to move the eyes, but we are not going to actually interact with them, uh, you know, in any way from now because we already have this to move the eyes, all right? Uh, we could, uh, of course, uh, create another system that allows us to, apart from this, to rotate the eyes from from here directly and uh, yeah that is pretty cool but uh, in this case we are only we only want to move them with this so we want to hide these objects uh, so well we can just press H and alt H the same we did with the with the mesh before but uh, there is a more elegant way that allows us to uh, you know group uh, bones because sometimes we have a lot of bones in a rig because rigs get really complex. I already said that, I think. And um, yeah, the layers allows us to uh, just uh, store things, uh, the bones in the layers um, very uh, well. <laughs> All right, so uh, keep in mind that they, uh, the, the bone layers which are here inside the armature panel uh, have nothing to do with the scene layers. All right, all the armature everything inside the armature is stored in just one layer which because it's one object a container right so uh, but you inside the the armature you have a lot of layers actually if you count them you have more than 20 layers uh, than the 20 layers that you have in the scene all right so these are like uh, I don't know sadly but I think they are 16 32 layers I think all right so uh, okay you can pick these uh, two guys press M and once you are into the edit mode or in the post mode, 
you can with M here you can see how it's like change bone layers not change layers as in a normal object mode so you can go ahead and hide them right here in another layer so now as you can see it, it took a little bit to update here I don't know why but you can see how if we press shift and left click we can see them all right or we can see only that layer we can see any other layer it works exactly the same as the layers here in the scene but you need to access them from the armature properties uh, all right so that let us uh, hide that uh, that bones that we don't need anymore and now one last thing I would like to show you in this tutorial is uh, how to lock some uh, some things all right because for example this uh, custom shape we want to be able probably to scale it to make these cool eye movements and, and that stuff. Uh, but this one, for example, we are only able to move it. All right. It, it, it has no point uh, to scale them because when we scale this, uh, these shapes, it doesn't uh, matter because this is only taking the pivot point of this bone uh, to look at it. And it doesn't matter the, the size or the rotation or anything. So, uh, you know, if uh, overall if the character is going to be uh, used for another animator the, uh, you know independent from us uh, we want to give the animator something that he can intuitively use so uh, we want to have this object to uh, work only the way it's expected to work so let's select this one and here in the transform panel here you have some locks all right so you can lock this object into the transforms. Uh, there is another way to do it and is to go here to the bone properties and here you have the transform locks section and here you can lock uh, different uh, aspects of the transforms of this uh, bone. Keep in mind that if you do it from here uh, you actually can transform locks here but this will affect only to the container to the full armature so uh, be careful with that just do it from the bones or just do it from here so as you can see let's so you can see it uh, here you have this uh, transform gizmo which uh, lets you uh, move in the three axes if we block two of them now you only have shown the C axis which is pretty cool because the animator if if he sees that uh, he knows uh, intuitively that he can only move this object like this and actually if you press G even you move around the object will only move in the C axis. So this will limit the amount of uh, movement that the animator can do. So he doesn't move something by error or in a way that is not pretended to move. Okay, but in this case, we want to uh, fix the rotation like that and the scaling. Look how if we lock them here, they also lock here. And uh, right now, if we press R, it doesn't rotate if we press S if does it doesn't scale so let's do the same with this I don't know right now if there is a way to copy them let me investigate it all right indeed you can copy them and uh, I'm gonna show you how uh, if you go to the user preferences control alt U or you can just go to the file user preferences and here you have this window so here in the add-ons uh, section one of the first uh, add-ons that you have is the 3D view copy attributes menu. All right, you need this one. And you can see here that it activates by pressing Control C in the uh, in the view. All right, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it comes already activated by default, but just in case, I, I, I wanted to show you that you can activate it from the add-ons window. So what we need to do is uh, we have this object that already has these transforms locked. So we select the objects that we want to transform, to, to lock the transforms, and shift, and this one. Because this option will copy the options of the last selected object, which is the add tip one. So let's press Control c copy protected transform, and now if we go to the other one, here you have it. Let's repeat it so you, so you understand it better. Here you have the lock transforms, and here you have the opened transforms. We select first the one that we want to copy to, then we select the one that we want to copy from, control C, copy protected transform, and if we select the, the, the other one, as you can see, it's already locked. So both of them are locked. 
Now this one also, we want it to move around, we want it to rotate, but we don't want it to scale. So we can go here, here and just load the scaling. So yeah, a lot of stuff going on in this tutorial because uh, rigging is pretty complex, but it's pretty funny. And uh, yeah, it's kind of surprising that I didn't make a rigging tutorial before, but uh, yeah, because rigging is something that I really like and uh, I've made a lot of riggings and yeah, so uh, here's the first one. And uh, well, I would like to know what you think about it, if you learned from it. I really hope you learned something from it. And uh, well, see you on the next tutorial and happy blending.